In the barren fields just outside Sidi Bouzid lies the body of 26-year-old Mohamed Bouazizi in the peace and dignity that eluded him in life. His fresh grave marked only by the Tunisian flag that drapes over it. On December 17th, Mohamed Bouazizi, a single man who had supported his widowed mother and siblings since the age of 10, took to the streets with his fresh produce cart to earn a day's wage. <laughs> At around 10 a.m. as he was making his way through the streets, the policewoman began to harass my son, so he called his uncle to help him. She left him alone only to return later to confiscate his cart. Mohammed said no. The policewoman took the fruit, but when she tried to take his scales, Mohammed refused. She slapped him and began to insult and curse his father. Mohammed, frustrated and ashamed by the public humiliation he endured at the hands of police, set himself on fire outside the local municipality building. His closest friends, anguished by Mohammed's actions, took to the streets and began a popular uprising that lasted for weeks before it toppled the 23-year-old rule of President Zain Abidin bin Ali. In one of the most foretelling moments at the peak of the Tunisian uprising, the soon-to-be ousted president visited a badly burned Bouazizi in his hospital bed just before he died. Police delivered the body to the family for burial under tight security, afraid news of his death would only fuel the uprising even more. When we wanted to bury him, we wanted to carry his body in front of the municipal building where he burnt himself. The police wouldn't let us. They told us to take his body through a place nobody would see us. But cell phone video given to Al Jazeera by his family shows hundreds of mourners risking a police crackdown to escort the body for burial. Away from the popular uprising, his self-immolation triggered. Bouazizi was a simple and modest man. Not a single person hated him. He did not have a single fault or bad behavior. He had ambitions that he never achieved. He wanted to get married and have some money to take care of his mother and family. Outside his family home stands the produce cart from which Mohammed tried to earn a dignified living. And kilometers away, his family, friends and strangers now come to visit the man whose death, they pray, has given birth to a nation's freedom. Ayman Mohideen, Al Jazeera, Sidi Bouzid.